Hi everyone, it's Nicole and I'm doing my last layout using the planetarium kit and this time it is for real. As you can see, I am down to my scraps, scraps. So I'm cutting down <clears throat> these um, papers to about one and a half or yeah one and a half by one and a half but some of the papers were so small that I had to cut them one and a quarter by one and a half which I still managed you know to get what I needed so basically I'm going through all my scraps and I'm trying to get at least three different uh, squares and then I'm going to start using my die cut machine and an hexagon template and it is from my favorite things and it's called dynamics hexagons and it comes in a couple of size on on the die so really there's no rhyme or reason as long as the paper is big enough to be cut to that size um, I'm gonna cut it out and I'm gonna end up having to do this three times because I didn't have enough hexagons so I do it once and then I you'll see me counting the holes but obviously I missed quite a few because I forgot the ones on the side and then I'm gonna have to cut some more out but I think the third time I just didn't didn't bring the uh, the second even second time even I don't think I brought out the machine again because I'm I'm using it here quite often so the sandwich is it's uh, C plate the green plate, the B plate, and then I have a, a metal plate that I put in there and it helps to cut intricate cuts. And I believe I got that at Simon Says. And this is the MFT die and I'm putting every second hexagon is too small so I just was able to cut maybe six every time I went through. So it took a bit of time and of course the die I chose just scored. It didn't just scored and didn't cut. So then I had to take my scissors and and just cut off the tips. So that's going to take a few minutes and then when I do it with the second time I use my other die that each hexagon is cut separately. So that seemed to work a little faster because then I didn't have to cut off the tail. <laughs> but it still didn't take too too long and I'm going to clean off my work area and then I took this template out from Jelly Bean Soup. And at first I thought it would be kind of neat if it actually kind of stayed there <clears throat> and use it as an el el element design and and I thought well you know what you ordered two so why don't you just use one that you could use it on the page and then the next one keep it as a template but I go through quite a few colors as you, as you see I took out a pink I took out a yellow I took out a gray and a craft and nothing that I liked really liked so then I put some temporary adhesive under the back of that template and then there's no rhyme or reason I just start adding um, hexagons to any squares as long as two of them that were the same weren't next to each other and I would try to remember to flip them from back you know back and forth so that you would have you wouldn't have the same pattern side by side. And I believe at this time I might have ran out of hexagons. So I'm going to start gluing them down for a bit. And then I'm going to uh, Put that away for a bit and then I'm going to start cutting out some hexagons and this is where you're going to see me counting you know okay well I need approximately this much and then it's still not going to be enough so I'm going to 
end up cutting two sets. It's a great way to use up your scraps. Like you'll see, I'm going to do my Killikit video right after this one. And you'll see how many papers I actually used up. I was calculating. There was 21 sheets, different sheets that came in the collection. I ordered the add-on pattern paper and the more pattern paper. So I had another 21 sheets. Well, out of those 21 sheets, I had seven sheets that I brought the second paper. And they're in there too with, you know, not much left. So now that, you know, I got all those down, I thought, you know, they look kind of bland. I kept lift, lifting the template and they look kind of bland. So I decided that I was going to take my journaling pen and I was going to outline every single one of those hexagon. And that took a bit of time, but it was worth it. I, I really like the outlook. And even though the process can be a little lengthy sometimes, if you enjoy the process and you enjoy what, um, what comes out at the end, then that's all that matters. I mean, a lot of times, and I hate saying that it's, it's almost like I'm killing time, you know, but I'm f instead of sitting down watching TV, which is another, you know, killing time activity, at least this killing time, I'm actually getting stuff done, which is, which I love very much. And if I sound a little sluggish this morning, I just finished a night shift and it was probably the longest <laughs> night shift since I've done in a long time. Just feeling super, super tired. And um, as soon as I'm done this, I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> but I'd like for it to be, you know, get processed while I'm sleeping so that it'll give me a chance to upload it before I go to bed. And I also want to do my Killikit video because literally when you see my scraps, I could probably, I mean, realistically, I could probably come up with a layout, you know, if I pushed it. But I think it's good. I feel good with the amount that I got done. So for the end of the templates, I had kind of drew the first two, you know, and I didn't like it. It looked like it was cutting off. So what I decided to do was just draw sort of the back of the outline and then glue a piece of those hexagons and then keep the outline going because at least then it's going off the page and not just starting mid page. And I'm going to do the same thing on the sides. So then instead of my hexagon sort of look like they're all starting in the middle of the page, it just gives it some kind of continuity like, okay, they were coming from there and then coming off the page. So this is where I start, you know, cutting all the excess off. so that it looks good and then I realize I'm still missing a few and I'm going to glue those down and I know some of them are going to you know going to be covered up but I just rather not at the last second have to cut something you know take my cuddle bug again and take everything out and so I'd rather do just be proactive and just do it so now the only thing left is to outline every hexagon that are on the outside of the page at this point. So that takes a few minutes too. This layout took me uh, two hours and two minutes to complete. And it is the 22nd layout using the planeta planetarium kit. Sorry, I needed a drink. And then I knew I wanted to use one of those um, Maggie Holmes frames. 
Polaroid frames and I mounted some of that pattern paper in behind and then I had some grid paper that were from a few months ago but I still hadn't used them and I said hey you know use that up it's a grid paper it goes everywhere so I'm gonna put that there and that's where my title is gonna sit and this page you know if you've been following me for a while I've done a page for each of my kids that I'm gonna leave them a letter and it's more like um, you know like I hate almost calling it like wisdom letters but more like you know think about this if this is happening and think about that and and I have three up to now I have life's obstacles life's meltdowns life's accomplishments and these ones is called this one is called life's expectations and I make those journaling blocks kind of tucked in behind so that they're going to be the only ones reading it and now I'm trying to use those red letters from the cur and I took out my sticky keys the navy and the light blue so that worked out really well and uh, this page is going to be life expectations and what I'm doing is I'm doing a page for each child and my husband it's going to be kind of letters to them and each title kind of has something about life like my first one was life's obstacles the second one was life's meltdowns and my third one was life's accomplishments and this one here is going to be life's expectations and then you know in behind in the hidden pocket the journaling is going to be in that so now I'm going through my basic gray journaling cards it's going to take me a few minutes but I'm going to end up finding one that I liked and then I'm going to take out um, my ribbon that I got from Stampin' Up. And I take out a couple of brads. And I'm also going to put some foam tape in behind that Polaroid picture. Now I'm going to set that brad and the ribbon and I attached it with the mini attacher. I'm going to start gluing down my layers with the quick dry adhesive. And I'm going to put some of that foam tape that I got at Custom, Custom Crops. It's from 3M. It comes like 72 yards in a row. So now I'm going to start working on my title that says Life's Expectations. And it's going to fit right there in that frame. It's a little crooked, so I start it all over again. Then I took out my new Studio AE August 2013 stamp and there was a little one there with sort of like a tail and then a heart and then the tail. So I put at the top left of the title and the bottom right and then there was another one that said see the big wide world so I stamped that underneath and then I stamped the days or the date in two colors, a blue and a red. Okay. 
So now I'm adding those brads that I had taken out. I'm working on the right side of the page now where the doily is and I found a, a thing that said noted and I cut it in half or less than half and I'm going to put it in that area. I'm going to add a brad that was from this month's kit and now I'm adding some Mr. Huey. go ahead okay I just had to leave that in in there for you guys I must have dozed off because all of a sudden I caught myself saying go ahead it was like real a truck was calling out for me so anyway here are the close-ups and the page is done so thanks for watching